Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to Kerrika TV. I'm Erica Lasan. Today we have an awesome artist spotlight for you guys. I'm gonna be introducing you to my good friend and sharp eye photographer, Errol Leonard, who made a move from Indiana to the Big Apple to pursue a career in modeling, but later discovered that the arts were more his thing. We had an opportunity to sit down with Errol and chat with him about how the New York streets and art frame his being. Stay tuned, because you're about to meet Errol Leonard. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Kerrika TV. We are here on the street, literally, with my homeboy, Errol Leonard. <laughs> so we're talking to Errol today. Errol's a street photographer, extraordinaire, slash, well, he was a model in his former life, um, amongst a lot of other things. He's just an all-around artist. How did the model scene treat you? Um... Pretty well. When I first moved to New York for modeling, I was really focused on trying to make that happen, um, you know, for me and it, it, realizing it wasn't for me. And then also being in a big city, coming from a small town in Indiana to going to school in Florida, to living in Charlotte, North Carolina for a while, and then finally coming to New York and you're kind of like, oh my God, it's so much, it's like a play, kid's playground for adults, you know, like our young adults. And you just get lost in it and, you know, you find your voice, your style. Que rica. How do you feel your humble beginnings um, and you growing up in Indiana affect you as an artist or influence you as an artist? Well, in a big way. I come from a religious background. I have a father who's a preacher. Um, that was literally like my life growing up and not knowing that there was a world of opportunities out there. But for some reason, always having a sense of wonder and adventure as a kid. I knew that there was something bigger out there, but, you know, I just didn't know how to find it. And it wasn't that my parents, you know, kept me from anything growing up. Uh, we traveled a lot as a kid and I saw things and I think that also installed a lot in me. And I just believe that all kind of is shaping me now and plays a big part in a lot of things. Yeah. Especially your art. Especially my art because uh, it's a way I communicate with people. I used to be really shy. I don't know why, but... Um, my work or whatever I did spoke for me. Mm -hmm. But then when it came time to speak, I was very quiet <laughs> and I'd be kind of like, oh, I don't know what to say. Now I can't shut up. But like, <laughs> all that has a lot, a lot to do with even religion and the dark side of religion and the questioning and it all plays a part in what I do and how I demonstrate things. And, you know, even thought provoking art and just making people think like, where did that come from? Where were you when that happened? Why did you do that? And it's just a, to give that feeling is like it all comes from there because I wonder too you know que rica. so what was it that inspired your transition from being in front of the lens to being behind it because you're really 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 dope behind the lens I'm an artist and you know growing up from playing with Legos and building structures to going to CAD school and going to art design school that's always been me so you know like it was no surprise when I decided like that's the direction I want to go in you say that you went to art school. Which art school did you go to? I went to um, two art schools. In high school, I went to uh, a two-part high school, um, second half of the day. And so it was kind of like I got training that way, and then also went to CAD school for architectural design. Believe it or not, I wanted to be an architect. <laughs> Actually, I really do believe it, and I'll tell you why. If you guys check out his site, most of the pictures, well, not most of the pictures, a lot of the pictures are of beautiful buildings. Like, you seriously know how to make a building look amazing. Yeah. It's kind of like an art form, you know? So, like, I look at buildings in that way, and any building can just be boring, but how you look at it, just how you look at clothes or anything, it can be somewhat fun and discovering new ways to make it look great. Que rica. As you guys can tell, we got some some bikes going on. And as you guys already know, I'm an avid cyclist. So I always big up and high five, high five. My fellow bikers, when I see that they are out and about doing their things on two wheels. So how does biking influence your work, your being, and your overall uh, essence, I guess? <laughs> it's... um therapeutic in a way um it shows you things or you see things in a different light you know especially from photography and buildings and just riding around and you have to stop and get your equipment out and snap a shot but it's just like the, the perspective of the city life is so different you know but um just from walking down the street you might just be walking past something on a bike for some reason your eyes open up you know and that helps me out a whole lot and it also saves you time and, more importantly, money. Yeah. So, everybody get with the, mo the wheeled movement. Que rica.
What is it that inspires your photography? A lot of comes comes from what I just see naturally in the street. So, you know, if I'm riding my bike or I'm walking, I always look at a structure or something. I'm kind of like, oh, that's cool. And it could be anything from just something on the sidewalk to like anything on a building or inside of a building and stuff that normal eyes won't see. But, you know, it's just small details and you're just kind of like, wow, OK, like that's cool. Click, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you got to get off your bike first. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Uh, no, but some bicycle safety is number one. But there's been one time that I have been on my bike and I captured something really great, and I was moving at enough speed where I could click and put it back in my pocket and keep on going. And that's kind of dangerous, but it's kind of fun too because you're just kind of like, ha, ah, I got it, you know. <laughs> just a assumption of all the things that I've been through in life and what I've seen, just all that inspires me as well. Like, I mean, just remember as a kid, like 12 years old, being in a you know architect firm, you know, cleaning buildings for my father. And that kind of inspired me. That sent me on that trail of, you know, design and wonder. So do you feel like at any point in the future, maybe after you've done your, like, special projects and you've come out with a certain thing, uh, a couple of certain things, you would uh, maybe consider becoming an architect? Seriously? I wouldn't say become an architect. I'd maybe say um, have a hand in designing something. Since the age of 14, I designed my, my home, my dream home. The blueprints, I have that somewhere at my parents' house, but it's just funny. At 14 years, I already know what my house wants, what my house to look like. Though. Almost like the equivalent to a woman um, planning her wedding since she's like a little girl. Except for him, he plans his home. I'll see so many things that you'll take pictures of and it's like, oh my goodness, I've seen that building so many times, but I've never viewed it in the way that you view it. And I also feel like color plays a lot into um, your photography. When I look at a lot of your pictures, it, there's like a really, really great play on color composition and all of that. How does, uh, like, what inspires that? Uh, I like color and then also it brings a different presentation to, uh, like you said, several buildings that people have seen all over the city before and it's just kind of like, oh, let me play with this a little bit. I guess I'm making people see what I see and I, for a long time I didn't see it as a gift or anything. I just thought it was just what I do. But now I'm starting to see like, hey, that's it's something that can be very, you know, beneficial for me in the long run. Most people actually don't know that this is your second time in New York City. You, oh, yeah, <laughs> you went away and then you came back. What is um, what are some of the lessons that you've learned throughout the course of your times um, living in the city? Basically, what has the city taught you? I noticed when I left for that year to go back to Indiana. When I thought originally I was going somewhere else besides coming back to New York, it, it just made me realize how aggressive I've become. And I'm always a soft-spoken and very, you know, relaxed person. And then that, now I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know, like I'm just like I'm, I'm letting people know what I want, and I'm speaking my mind. And if it doesn't rubs people the wrong way, it's okay. You know, that's it's me. I love being here. I love the energy. I love the people. Um, but on a small hand, for as a creative person too as well it can be a bit much and it can be a bit of the same thing all the time i'm going to all these exhibits and looking at artists and i'm looking at where they live and where they're at and not some of these don't say new york city you know they're they work from their hometowns and they they get themselves and they work hard and you know 15 years later they have this massive amazing piece of work and then the people appreciate it all over the world and sometimes i'm like i want that but then i love this the playfulness of new york city so it's kind of like you want both and you can't have it, so you got to choose. So does that mean that leaving the Big Apple may be somewhere in the near future, sadly for us? Possibly it can be in the near future. Leaving New York City can be a blessing and it can also be a curse. So you have to be very sure and wise of where you go after New York City. Um, yeah. Que rica. What are some projects that you have going on um, in the next couple of months and what can we look forward to from Errol Leonard in the future? I'm developing a series based on the TV Head series that I have been doing. Men with TV Heads, mainly me as myself as a muse. But I want to take it further and, you know, develop that into a whole story and then watch it grow and, and you know, be something big. Que rica. 10 to 15 years from now, where would you hope to see yourself? And where can we expect to see you? Um, 10 to 15 years, hopefully in a major gallery or museum somewhere, you know, demonstrating my art and showcasing it around the world. Like, that would be my ultimate dream. Hell, five years. <laughs> All right.
like the way you think. <laughs> put it out there, put it into the atmosphere. Where can people find your work? Uh, Errolinner.com or errolinner.tumblr.com, uh, which I post daily what I see and, you know, just street photography or architecture and from even some of my artwork. So, guys, you heard it here first on Kerrika TV. Make sure you follow Errol on Instagram at Errol Leonard, as well as on Facebook and all of that other good stuff. Bye. Bye. <laughs>when I was studying to be a doctor and I, I found that I loved doing the fashion more and then so fast forward I graduate and I, I took a year off to kind of really decide what my next step was going to be. Life is waiting for us to show up and share our talents and live out our dreams one declaration at a time so make a list of goals that you would like to complete yourself and then you know start working towards them every day.